Welcome to Etude Number 9, Part 1. This is all part of the Villa Lobos 12 and 12 Challenge, and we're going to dive into this wonderful ornamental study. All right, main points here are, first finger is going to be doing half bars and guiding at the same time. You're pretty much going to use your first finger up and down the fretboard for all of these chords. Go gently. For the half bars, you want to flex in at the tip joint and not squeeze too hard. Let the tip joint do the pressing. Two, as usual, laser ahead. There are some shifts uh, involved, especially some big shifts, so make sure that your eyes are ahead of your hands. Three, you're going to need to use full planting to get the smorzato, or dello smorzato effect, the damping effect that Villalobos is after here in this section. That means using IM to stop the accompaniment strings. Finally, last point, the bass line is the melody here, so it's super important that it stays out. That cannot be planted, and you will hear, I'll demonstrate it in a second. On a side note, it, if you haven't practiced the uh, smorzato or the damping, then I suggest you have a look at a studio number nine from uh, Saw and Segovia, but if you don't have the Segovia edition, obviously mine is quite well worn now, it's Opus 31 and number 20. And you could even have a look at S Studio number 11, Opus 6 number 3, to help with your slurs. But the best one is probably this edition, the Mauro Giuliani Complete Studies uh, by Tecla. In the, the front is Mauro Giuliani's uh, manual that he set up, or his, you know, his classical guitar method. Part three of that has some fantastic examples and you should look at example number two and example number eight, the Della Gruppetto, the turns, because that is literally what you're gonna be practicing in this study. So worth checking out if you want some extra damping and turn practice. Welcome to micro study number one and micro study number one is just open strings for practicing the various right hand patterns here. Obviously the main one is going to be the damping one, which takes up pretty much the first half of this piece. I'm going to demonstrate what happens if I do full planting, P, I, and M, and then just planting with I, M, and you should hopefully hear the difference. Here's full planting. And here is planting with just I, M. Obviously with planting, and you can hear when I do it, my nails are a little long, but you try not to get your nails to click too much. So the planting is flesh, then nails, not nails and flesh. From the beginning, here is the first bar. Practice getting the I am fingers and the thumb under control. Bar number two starts to bring in where we get the first set of slurs in the second half. So it's worthwhile practicing this as open strings to try and get as fast as you possibly can with the I, M and A fingers. The other thing you're meant to be practicing here, but that is once you feel comfortable, is getting the bass strings under control. You don't want to let them ring on. So you're going to have to plant once you start playing the bass strings, especially in bar number three, because this is the bass line that Villa Lobos introduces near the end of this piece. So. so you're going to have to do a little bit of damping with your thumb here. Other than that, the main tip and technique I can give you for the second section of the piece, think of them as a strum. And you will get closer to the sound of Villa Lobos. With that in mind, bars, bar two in the first micro study is the only really difficult bar. After that, everything else is rolled chords with thumb damping. One of the main things that Villa Lobos does near the end of the piece is he starts to develop the rhythms and the right hand pattern. So bars number five and number six, we start to get a different pattern. You're gonna have to work on getting 
P I M A M really fast. So it goes P I M A M on the same string. line changes there so you're going to have to do it with different bass lines as well. Try your best to think of it as a roll chord with a note after it. Um, practicing it slowly like this is great for getting it up and running but it is not going to get you near the speed you need for performance. So think of it as a roll chord with an extra M finger. Right on the end the last chord of the piece is an F minor chord with no slur, but you still need to give it a feeling of slur. So you need to be able to do the PIMA, but this time across two strings. So P I M A M. Once you put it back into contact, it's the sound the same as the slur. to aim for that so practice that separately on open strings to make it easy for yourself so by the time that you get to the ending the last bar all you've got to concentrate on is the notes Welcome to micro study number two, chord shapes. We're going to dive straight in. Half bar at fret nine. If you notice, my tip joint is only slightly flexed, mainly because I'm up high and everything is in a line. Once you move further down the fretboard, you can start to see that I need more flexion in the tip joint to do the half bar. So keep that in mind as we move down. To begin with, we're just going to step through the chords one shape at a time, and then we will put them back in as per the piece. Here we go, chord one. Half bar at fret nine. Fingers three, two, and one for chord one. Put the half bar on at nine. Half bar at nine. Look ahead to fret seven. Half bar at seven. Half bar at five with fingers two and three on C sharp and F sharp respectively. Next chord, half bar at fret four. Finger two comes off, finger three stays on, same shape natural. Next chord, half bar at two, flexion has increased. Next chord, half bar at one, finger two on the C sharp. Next chord, nice and easy, open strings. Last chord, half bar at two, but this time upper string. Strings four, three, and two, finger three on the low F sharp, and finger one flexing across fret two on C sharp and F sharp. And then it's back to the top again for the next micro study. So just put all those chords back in and practice them as a unit all the way up and down until you have them and then put them back into the micro study. Welcome to micro study number three. We only have four new chord shapes to contend with and then we will walk through the pattern as per the study. So the new chord shapes are fingers three, two and one. 12, 13, and 14 respectively. This is just your A minor chord shape, the bottom half of it, shifted up an octave. That chord shape and the finger shape stay the same. You fret, you shift down two frets. Then we have a half bar at fret 10. Then we have a half bar at fret 9 with the third finger on. The B flat chord. The next chord shape is the G minor chord, but I have fingered it differently for this first time. But we'll have a look at that on the way around. I'm going to pick it off straight away with the last beat of the previous micro study with the F sharp chord. Again, we are in a half bar position at fret nine. Same, same chord shapes down to seven. 
now, this is where it changes. We are not doing a half bar here now. Two, three, and one, because we're gonna have to shift up to fret 12, and your first finger is gonna guide up, and it's pretty difficult to do this with a half bar there, and get that note clean. So take the half bar off at five, shift up to 12, and that's it. So those added to the pile, if you practice them all together, the entire pattern just down the fretboard as one, just like this. Once you have those shapes under your fingers, it is so easy to put them back in. And then you can use the bass line. To memorize the, the pattern or the melody, it depends on how you want to approach the music. Let's take a look at that. Once you have the chords and you're happy with them and you're confident you know where you're going, you put them back in and hopefully you've been practicing your damping technique. Making sure that the melody. Welcome to micro study number four. There are only four chord shapes now <clears throat> left to have a look at, and then we're into a arpeggio and scale segment in sextuplet. So let's dive into the chord shapes. The chord shapes without a bass line are literally half bar at fret two, shift down, G sharp, C sharp, open E, open strings, and then full bar at fret four with F sharp, B sharp, and D sharp. Once you put the bass line in, it's an open A, an E, a G. Notice the third finger, you're gonna to have to switch quickly to a G sharp, first finger. These are all things to keep in mind. Put them together and this is what it looks like. chord is nothing more than a dominant 7 on the G sharp because we're heading back to C sharp minor so it's just a 5-1. So those are the first four chords, the fingering for the arpeggio and if you've done etude number two this shouldn't be a problem. If you haven't check out the video popping up now. Here we go it's 1-4 hammer on fret 4 to fret 7, third finger First finger, second finger, first finger, fourth finger. Your right hand can do PPIMA if you want to, or you could just go straight from a P. The choice is yours. That's the arpeggio section, and then the scale has a variety of ways of fingering. I am just doing my fingering, but I urge you to practice and in investigate the different ways of fingering it. Stay in position, finger four, two, one. Finger four on the F sharp, 
open string to shift, three, one, zero, shift into first position, two, one, four, two, one, four, two, zero, four, two, and then you're in. And again, as usual, we have six tuplets here, so once you've got your pulse, there's the main beat with the quavers. One and the one and the one. The pulse will set it up and it shouldn't be too difficult. Let's take a look at this in slow motion. Thank you for staying until the end. This has all been part of the Villalobos 12 and 12 challenge, which has been run from the classicalguitarrocks.com website. Head over there, grab yourself some free lessons, some free downloads, and even some courses in advanced guitar pieces and techniques. Thank you.